Medical Tourism Corporation interviewed Dr. Juan Manuel Aragon, Assistant Medical Director at Hospital Clinica Biblica, San Jose, Costa Rica. How do you ensure the quality of your physicians is good? Well, we have several mechanisms to assure specifically the quality of physicians. Number one, we have a, a credential and privileging process, which means that we looked at what doctors do in the hospital and look at their outcomes and their procedures and select those doctors that hold the best procedures or the best outcomes uh, for the patients. And on top of that, we run uh, surveys on patient satisfaction for each individual doctors and we give feedback to those doctors because the clinical side is important, the knowledge is important, the surgery, the technical part is important, but a big portion of the outcomes is how the patient relates to the doctor. So we run those and give them feedback and make sure doctors stand uh, in a good percentage of those surveys. What quality indicators and benchmarks do you monitor and work to improve? We collect all sorts of data from all the hospital stuff that we um, As you know, when, when, when you look at indicators, you look at structure indicators, you look at process indicators, and you look at outcome indicators. The most widely known are outcome indicators, and those are your mortality, and your morbidity, and your infection control, and your falls, things that are the end result of the process of care, and those are the most widely benchmarked. So for example, our infection control uh, benchmark is at 3%, I mean, we are at 3%, and our benchmark is at 5%. Our uh, falls um, indicator is at 1%, and then the benchmark is at 5%. Our mortality rate is under 1% for the overall hospital. On top of that, we also measure the processes of the hospital. That means that we don't only care what the end result is, but what is the experience of that patient through the process. So for example, when we deal with stuff like pain management, we don't only go to the files and reveal how many pain managements were done on the patients in the post-surgical unit, but we actually go to the units and say, has your pain management been done? Do you recognize the skills? Have you been satisfied with your pain management skills? Uh, and that way we look at the whole process uh, of the patient experience. What's your nurse to patient ratio? Yes, we have, a, we have a dynamic model in our nursing staffing, which means that we adjust the nursing staffing ratios to the patient needs. So for example, in our normal units, it'll be four to one, which is what the literature has proven to be safe, uh, cost benefit regular force, but in our ICU we hold one-to-one -one or one-to-two depending on the complexity of the patient. And in some less uh, need of care units, uh, for example a maternity ward, that drops down to five-to-one, five-to-one, five-to-one. An example of how you work on prevention of staph infection? Well, as everybody knows, infection, infections is what kills people in hospitals is the highest risk factor for being at the hospital. You have to be very, very careful, and that's where we measure infection rates. But the number one way to control infection in hospitals, like everyone knows, hand washing. It's basic and simple, but you have to measure it. So we do several things to control hand washing in the hospital. No one's perfect, uh, but we try to do our best to control it. So we, uh, we have little spies that go into our hospital floors. We have a uh, patients that spy for us, staff that spies for us, and measures how many times did a healthcare personnel wash their hands. They're supposed to wash their hands before and after uh, they come into contact with the patients. And we go and ask the patients these things. And then we also do not only monitor the amount of times they wash their hands, but the quality of the hand washing. So we go by the floors and personnel that is trained in this, they have a special substance and they have a special UV light and what they do is they rub the substance on their hands and then they show what's left over in the hands and if it blows, it's the bacteria they have in the other hand. And we use this as an immediate teaching opportunity for the staff to learn about hand wash. When you incorporate uh, staff, which is um, staff infections, uh, especially uh, resistant staff infections, are very hard to get rid of it. It's in any hospital in the world. 
hand washing is not sufficient. So you also have to incorporate uh, control over the antibiotics that uh, physicians prescribe for normal procedures. So what we do is that we monitor closely the resistance of our staffs on our hospital to the different antibiotics and suggest to the physicians what antibiotics should they use not to induce resistance in the staff and not to cause our patients uh, complications they should have. How do you compare this hospital to one in the U.S., Canada, or the West in general? It's always hard to do a one-to-one -one comparison to the hospitals because every hospital is different, every hospital has their standards. I think the number one thing that will distinguish our hospitals from some of the hospitals in the U.S. Um, is our people and our accessibility. Um, sometimes in the U.S. hospitals are so full and so productivity driven uh, the people never stop to talk to you to explain to do things. We try, we're not perfect, but we try for that to happen at our floors, um, for our nurses to have a smile, for people to serve, to people to, uh, to offer that. As far as infrastructure, medications available, surgical techniques, every, everything that we have is comparable to the U.S. We will have the same brand medications that you'll see in a U.S. hospital. Our construction standards are in line with the American Hospital Association, of course, and commission standards. Uh, our labs are certified internationally uh, to provide the care that is, uh, that is needed. How would you address the idea in the U.S. that there is no medical malpractice protection overseas? There is malpractice protection. Uh, our legal system uh, covers more practice suits like in many other international courts. But of course there's the difficult to access that system and that's something a patient needs to evaluate. Now when you look at a, a malpractice lawsuits around the world, especially in the U.S., 90% of those malpractice lawsuits derive from a miscommunication between the healthcare dealer and the patient. So what we try to do is enhance that communication and do it in good good patient-doctor interaction so that doesn't happen. And what does that mean? It means that the patient has to agree with the treatment that is going to be received, that the doctor has to agree with the treatment that is going to be given, and above all, that the patient realizes that the expectations of the treatment that he has are going to be the expectations of the treatment that the doctor can provide. If there's a misalignment on those uh, expectations, then we rather not provide the care because that is going to end up in a situation that no one's going to be happy and we want our patients to be happy with each other. Why should someone consider your hospital? Well, I think that people overseas, it's normal that they have a doubt about going away from home for care. I think it's very important that they consider a number of things when they choose a hospital. Because our hospital is one of many hospitals that are around and they're going to offer a variety of savings, cost, quality. I would say, number one, you need to look at someone with experience in the market that they're in. Um, if the people locally trust them, there's usually good material there to work for. You need to look for someone that is accredited or has proven to be accredited uh, by an outside institution. That means someone else is looking uh, at their quality. And number three, you should look at someone that is willing to work with your local doctor in providing that care. A lot of the times, people come overseas for care and they receive a specific surgery and the initial period goes, everything goes well, but one, two, or three months down the road, uh, they develop new symptoms. And that is completely expectable because we're changing human beings and we're happy if they come here to do the follow-up care needed. But so many times, you know, people don't want to travel that far again. Uh, so we're willing to work with our local doctors for them to do the necessary follow-up uh, and be involved in the care, even in the hospital while they're here, communicating with the patient and communicating with their staff um, for that to be, uh, for the follow-up. Thank you.